I say that the, at the core of the functional programming model for our distributed systems are events and functions. And let's see what the patterns are around events and functions. Now, remember, looking first at the network being unreliable, what we've done in the past was we used retries, just talked about those. But instead of retries, what if we use events and promises? Now, this, the work on promises, I, I, I uh, did a little bit of research to look back at the history of promises. Um, a couple of months ago, I was looking at this, and ironically, I found that it was my, um, actually my advisor at Indiana University that wrote the first paper on promises, at Stan Friedman. Um, studied programming languages at uh, IU for a, a, a long, long time. But promises, you can really think of those as just the event handlers. So, so this is the stuff that I promise to do if and when I need to. So that's one way of looking at it. Now, of course, those clients, the thing that was a client that was doing the retry, or that service that has the promise built into it where the event is, is triggering that, are themselves acting as services. So the client is the service. So let's keep that in mind as well. Now, if we move on to looking at latency, um, definitely not being zero, and bandwidth absolutely being limited, what have we done in the past? Well, like I talked about earlier, we had caches, and we had to deal with cache expiry. So now, instead of dealing with cache expiry, what if I think of my data stores, my local data stores, as a materialized view? And what is it that's feeding that materialized view? Well, it's events. Now, if we take those two things and we put them together, we've got the materialized view, and we've got an event processing hook. We've got that promise. We've got that event processing code. Look what happens here. We can actually pull those things apart. We can take the code that is processing the events and separate it from the code that's servicing, giving you access to the data that's in that materialized view. Look what we've just done. We just derived. CQRS. And this is the way that I like to look at CQRS. I find in many cases, we start with CQRS and we say, hey, we're going to separate the command and the query. But I actually am one of these people that likes to kind of come from first principles. I want to derive that. And looking at it this way allows me to see why we're doing CQRS and what the value of it is.